Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews. I'm your host, Christopher Brown. Last month, we ventured to Brandon, Manitoba amidst the buzz of the 2024 Association of Manitoba Municipalities Conference. Amidst the vibrant energy of the event, we seized the opportunity to engage with local leaders hailing from across the province of Manitoba. Now, today we are delving into the pressing issues confronting communities firsthand amplifying the voices of municipal leaders and offering insights into the diverse challenges and accomplishments by local governments in the province. So we'll be right back after a quick message with cross-border interviews featuring Mayor Tina Williams from Burden, Manitoba. In the heart of every thriving community lies a well-crafted strategic plan. But crafting such a plan requires expertise, experience, and a deep understanding of local needs. Enter Strategic Steps, your partner in municipal strategic planning. Strategic Steps team of experts have years of experience in municipal administration. At Strategic Steps, they just don't develop plans. They co-create homegrown strategies tailored to your unique community. They listen, they collaborate, they empower your community to thrive. Contact Strategic Steps today and take the first step towards a brighter future for your municipality. Call Strategic Steps at 780-416-9255 or visit strategicsteps.ca to get started. Um, Mayor, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. I want to start by asking a simple question, but an overarching one. Where did your sense of duty to serve your community come from, Tina? I grew up in Burden, although I wasn't born there and have been there most of my life. Um, Burden was always a community that had a lot of um, involvement. We had all the community groups and all that kind of stuff. And actually, I grew up in the Kinsman Club. I was what you call a kin kid because oh. my parents were in the Kinsman Club. So they ran the firefighters rodeo. They opened the first daycare, all those kind of things. And I grew up in that community group that we also went along and helped deliver meals on wheels and did all that stuff and then in high school I was involved in all those kind of things the tads and the stuff like that and after my kids grew up and I didn't have to run baseball and hockey anymore and I wanted to do something I kind of gravitated towards the municipal side of it so I've been I was a counselor for a term deputy mayor for a term and now I'm mayor okay so had prior to running in that first election for councillor, had you considered a life in politics? I or was don't. it was politics of an interest? And I want to ask this sort of yeah. double sided question: Was politics of an interest? And when you, if you were interested in politics, was it municipal or was it more provincial or federal? Oh, a hundred percent only municipal. <laughs> Mayor is Tina's top spot. Like that's as high <laughs> as it can go. Because I don't belong to a party. I don't do well in that kind of world where you kind of have to pick and choose bigger sides. So mayor is my top spot. So there is no interest in going any higher in that for me. And yeah, I think I just, as, as I kind of worked through my way through the things that you do as someone who grows up in a town, I just realized that maybe it might be good. We've always had women in burden politics, like for 30 some years, 40, they've had women on council. That's a change of conversations that I've had in in Manitoba so far in the last few days. But we have, and I I knew some of the older women that were on it in the past years, but we're to the point now that actually I'm our first female mayor, and of my six councillors, three of them are women. So we're like a majority female council. And I'm not a person who thinks that's the most important. I also think the different ages is important. That's all my three women are in their 30s. Oh wow! So that's also so you have a, a young council, very young council. So it's a nice like I'm kind of the mid stop. My three women are in their 30s, three men are in their 60s, and I'm in my 50s. So we kind of cover all the bases, and I think that that's important too. So, so I have a weird question I ask a lot of people because. Prior to getting involved in this the show and talking about municipal politics, I used to cover councils on a regular basis in Ontario, Saskatchewan, Alberta, and it would be hard-pressed to find at least two people who would show up to council meetings or even one person to show up to council meetings besides like potentially a local newspaper yeah. or if there's something controversial going on. In your time in 
political uh, in municipal office, have you seen the apathy towards municipal politics change to the point where people, as long as my water's turned on and my garbage is picked up, I'm okay what's going on in City Hall and my taxes are relatively low. <laughs> I, our reporter comes yep. every week. We have the odd ex-counselor who if something goes on will come because they have an interest. Yep. Other than that, we've never had really people show up at meetings so there's nothing in change in that sometimes we have public meetings over things sometimes because a little con not since my time not as controversial that before me the counselor too there was a few events because i went to them that were quite big yeah but no we don't we did a strategic plan and we had a big presentation and a lot of people came to that but no, just my regular meetings. Sometimes my budget meetings people come to. Are people engaged though? Because that, that, that's the two different side of that story. Because yeah. apathy about going to council meetings is yeah. an issue across Canada. But will you get stopped in the grocery store and say, Tina, I have a question about what's going on or why this issue is being presented? I get a, I, I get a decent amount of questions and I don't get, I don't get a lot of people yelling at me or something like that. And I have a pretty good, like, if people say to me, I don't like the way you guys are doing that. I say, well, what would you do? Well, I don't know. Well, see, if I had a better idea, we'd be doing it too. So if you have a better idea, but if not, we're doing this because this is our best idea. And we don't get a lot of, everybody gets, yeah, I want my street done. I want my this done. I want my, but we don't get yelling and screaming people good. at us. And some people are engaged. There are always going to be people who think, you should engage me more. And I say, well, how? I put it on social media, we put it wherever we, like, it's only my job to engage you, you have to want to engage back. And luckily we have enough of those people yeah. who want to engage back. I think we're decent okay. in Verdon as far as places go. So I want to turn to Verdon as a whole now, and I want to talk about the challenges. But before I do, I always preface this question because I know I will get emails if I don't. This is a conversation between the mayor and myself. There's not a motion of council, not a direction of no. council, not even a policy of council. This is just your opinion and yeah. your opinion alone. In your opinion, what do you believe is the biggest challenge or challenges facing Verdon today as of this conversation? Um, that's hard. Verdon is pretty lucky in that we're not a one economy kind of place. So, like, right now, our biggest challenge is actually that we have jobs that aren't filled. There are jobs unfilled. We don't have housing. So you don't have the population. Yeah, we don't have the population for some of the jobs. And we're missing some of the housing that we need for people to come. Like, we have a group that's bringing in some new um, Ukrainian citizens, stuff like that, those kind of things. But we're not like a city in where we don't have apartment blocks, where there's easy entry-level get into town housing yeah but honestly if we had a couple of 16 unit apartment blocks go up together we'd fill them and we'd have jobs for those people really they aren't going to be the highest paid jobs in town but to me a lower, job is a job the lower to mid-level jobs yeah aren't, aren't getting filled like there are places we have a big list of job ads so is that hard for a community? Because I have driven through Verdon twice now since I've been in Manitoba, once while I'd come here and la once last summer. And I can tell you that it seems like a place where people are doing things. It's a yep. vibrant community. But if people aren't filling those jobs, if people aren't coming because the housing's not there or the the work isn't there to, or the housing's not there, so the businesses are struggling that means businesses could shut down yeah. what do you do and i say you as the royal you as a council yeah. do in the short term to address and alleviate some of these issues because this seems like a multifaceted issue mm -hmm. where the municipality can't do this alone you can't just build houses tomorrow no. and fill these vacancies but or fill these job vacancies but the businesses are struggling to fill these yeah. vacancies to stay open yeah and that's a very good question and i don't have a good answer <laughs> for it because that's what we're working on right now like there's different grants through the federal government, through FCM, through the province money for housing and that kind of yeah. stuff. And we're looking in that to see if there's anywhere that we can jump in and get on that. But a lot of them are just announced and they're kind of new. And we do don't know yet. And how do you balance the... Because NIMBYism is alive and well in this country. And I don't yeah. care where you are, from the smallest community to the most rural community, yeah. it is alive and well. How do you balance the, the, the challenges with... People saying, I don't want Verdon to change. I want yeah. it to stay the same. I want, I, this is the reason I stayed here. This is the reason why I don't want yeah. to move away. And I'm playing a little bit of devil's advocate because I think change is good. But you as council have to 
balance the needs of your community against the needs of the individuals in yeah. the community. And my yeah. Tina Mayer, not council <laughs> theories, and people know it's my theory, but if you don't change, you die. Yep. You can't just be sedimentary. Verdon looks very different now in a lot of ways than it did than when I was young. Um, the makeup of the people, everything about it, you know what? And it's slowly, ha- and it's great. And it has to keep changing. Yeah. We cannot just stay the same. That's not an option. People who think staying the same, staying the same is an option, want to live in a dead town. It's that simple. You can't. I agree. So flipping the, the original question about challenges, what does Verdon get right? What is the thing that you look at and you say, you know what, we're doing this right. And I agree that you need to always adapt and change so you're never going to get things perfect because you're always going to evolve. But right now, if you could look back and say, you know what, Verdon is doing this right and I'm proud that we're doing it right. I think that we have a very welcoming community and I think we have a community that you can find no matter who you are, you can find a group of people or a community group or something to become involved in and make yourself at home. Yeah. Like you can be anywhere from the little picking flowers in outfield baseball players to the ladies that do the clogging once a week and the dancing to the junior hockey games. And there's they're in the playoffs and they're going and there's like over like thousand of people, thousand thirteen hundred people at their hockey games. Probably, you can find if you look. You have to look. Yeah. If you look, you can find what you want to make yourself feel more at home. So, look, cautious of time. We're about ten minutes. I know it's a busy day here. You have to go to the trade show, yeah. but I want to talk about my favorite subject because, like I said, I'm coming to Verdon later on tomorrow. After I go to Portage the Prairie, I'm coming back through to there Verdon. So, what should I do in Verdon while I'm there on a Friday afternoon? Friday <laughs> afternoon, and the snow's gone, so you can actually look around and do some things. Besides I, uh, going to your city hall, because that's my first stop in any community oh, yeah. I go yeah. to, is go to city hall and see if I can find a lapel pin. <laughs> it's funny, actually, because the Civic Center is yeah. where Town Hall is. So the Civic Center is actually attached to the Odd Theater, which may not be open on a Friday afternoon. But if you ever have the chance to go to a show there, it is the oldest opera house in Western Canada. It is beautiful. It's about 500 seats currently. <coughs> the very old, slightly uncomfortable for skinnier people seats. <laughs> and they just received a grant of $350,000 from the Tundra Foundation, and they are redoing all the seating in that place. And it is like 1911, I believe it is, the Opera House. Like the big slide up and down um, backdrops. And all really? That. It has the little seats on the side. As I used to tell my kids when they were little, the queen seats sits there. Like they have velvet. And if them. you're an American, the Ford Theater seats where the President Lincoln gets shot. Or, or if you're a kid like me, the guy, where the guys in the Muppets sit. And there you go. Like or Ward, Ward off and Stotler. <laughs> it is a beautiful facility and just received Tundra, um, Tundra Oil and Gas and, and their different parts of it. The Richardsons have been really good in the community about stuff like that. And yeah, $350,000 they just got to redo all of those seats. And if you go to a show there, people who perform there say it's a beautiful and wonderful facility. I used to do, you do festival there. As a little kid, we have our music and arts festival. You do your little spoken poetry. You oh. do your dance with your friends. You do it at the Odd Theater. Oh, you're, like make, I, you're, you're f- making me fall in love with this when, theater. <laughs> when Jim Terliving came, um, the Walk of Fame, he was from Bird. Yeah. Jim, his dad had a, had a, he was a barber there. And he actually yeah. talked about that about having been on stage at the Odd Theatre and doing, because anybody who's come, anybody who's come through Burton has been on stage there for one thing or another. So it's a big community thing for us. And if you ever have the chance to come to a show there, or walk in and watch the little kids sing. Well, this no, this August, I'm traveling across Manitoba in an RV. So I, there better be something going on yeah. in that theatre in beautiful. August. If not, I'm sure we can get you guys to take a look at it. <laughs> Awesome. We might have the poll. Um, Tina, one last question. It's yep. a million dollar question. In your opinion, what makes Verdon such a unique place to live, to work, and to raise a family? Wow, we've kind of, we're trying to follow along with everybody who's working on logos and taglines. And you know what we came up with? And it's totally true. We call it the center of it all, right? 
because we're on the corner of 1 and 83. We're right between Winnipeg and Regina. We're the center of the oil industry. We're the center. You can use it to do anything that you have, but we are. You can get everything right there. Wow. You, sh you don't have to be scared that you want to go off to Brandon and do something, or you want to go to Winnipeg <laughs> and do something, because it's great that you're close enough that you can just go to those places and do it. But you can always come home and everything's there. That's true. I guess that would be it. Tina, it has been a pleasure. You, Mayor, thank you so much for sitting down with me and chatting. You're welcome. Thanks. We want to thank the Association of Manitoba Municipalities for inviting us to this year's Spring Convention in Brandon, Manitoba. This episode would not have been possible without their support. Now, if you've enjoyed today's episode, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs to our in-depth conversations with municipal leaders from across Canada on the cross-border interviews or our eye-opening exploration of local governance in the political trenches, the local government at work. We are your go-to source for comprehensive municipal coverage from across Canada, committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged on the issues affecting municipalities. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, goes a long way in amplifying the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, but as always, just keep talking. Music